Hi guys, so today I've got a new quad frame. Um, it looks very familiar. Um, it's basically a version 2 of the SCX200. And I made a little revision to it, uh, just some improvements on how things are, are mounted, and I want to share with you what those changes are. So, I'm going to start with showing you the frame. See, it's very, very similar to the original version. And excuse my messy bench, I'm always working on something. Um, what you'll notice that's different right off the bat is the video transmitter is inside the frame laying flat. So I've gone through some trouble to redesign how the video transmitter is mounted and uh, I wanted it inside the frame laying flat so that I could put the antenna coming out the back and the main purpose of this design is that you put a bend in your antenna and then if you have a, a collision with a gate or something like that instead of your antenna getting ripped off at the SMA it's just going to bend downward. So it's going to take some of the stress off that SMA if you take a direct hit. And um, I found that I like running my antennas like this. They seem to last longer. Um, you, you know, because you're going to clip a gate once in a while. So that's the main design change. And now I'm just going to go through all the little changes that were made to the frame to accommodate that. And also explain some of the features that are new. So the first key change to make this design work was the addition of a new plate in the back. This is what I'm going to call the VTX mounting plate. Um, and just like the camera mount, it sandwiches between the bottom plate and the top plate, and it just kind of slots in there at the top and at the bottom to keep it locked in. So um, that's an additional plate, and you can see there's an archway in it. That's for you to be able to run power leads out. Then there's a slot there if you want to run your antenna leads out it too from your receiver. So that's the main component that changed. And along with that, I also made the whole stack height longer, or taller, I should say. So as opposed to the 25 millimeter standoff, so the original design, this one uses 30 millimeter. So it's a little bit taller, gives you a little bit extra room to squeeze your receiver in there. Now you got your, your VTX in there as well. And uh, as a consequence of that, the camera mount also got taller. And along with that, the camera angle max adjustable tilt is somewhere around 55 degrees if you were to slam the camera all the way up to the top plate. So it's an improvement in that area as well. Uh, so, along with designing a new VTX mounting plate, I had to design a new top plate, and one of my priorities here was to make this top plate so that you had access to whatever form of channel changing device that the VTX has. So, I kind of stuck with the same VTX as I had before, except for now I've kind of added this one into the mix. This is your standard FX799T. Uh, this is a 25 milliwatt version, but they come in 200 and uh, 600, and they're they're all about the same size. But the key difference here is that these are push button transmitters, so you got this button to change the channels. So the plate, the way it's designed, the cutouts in it are made so that when you have the VTX in there, you have access to that button, and it'll appear right down there, approximately on the left side through the hole. You can peek through it and push it and get to it easily and then the LEDs will line up with the center hole and you'll be able to see which channel you're on still. So that's very convenient. Now if you're using the UBAD it's going to be something like this. You'll still have access to those dip switches and the same for the Hawkeye. And then lastly uh, the TS5823 your dip switches are right in the center of that cutout. So you got three three very common options for VTX's that are going to work very easily with this design. You can try the Fox here ones. Um, this one's a 200. Um, I believe you should be able to get to the button at least, but the LCD screen might be a little bit, or LED I should say, might be a little bit hard to read. So to go with all those changes, the bottom plate changed slightly. and. The main difference is basically the hole in the back is changed. You got two little slots, one here and there for your VTX plate to slot into it. So we'll take this VTX plate, you can see, and then we shall slot it in there. Well, it's a lot easier to do with two hands. Let's put it that way. But it goes in there um, and just stays sandwiched in between there and the top plate. So you can kind of see how that sits in there. Now what makes this design unique is um, this other plate I've added, it's called an anti-rotation plate. And uh, I haven't seen anything quite like this before on any other quads. Um, to try and keep it light I've made this out of carbon fiber and then you're going to need an O-ring. Um, this is a McMaster car part that I've ordered. It's a one and a half millimeter flat 
square o-ring with a six millimeter inner diameter. Okay, so operating a phone as your camera is not the easiest thing to do and put things together with only one hand. So I've enlisted the help of my helping hands. So now I'm gonna show you how this VTX mounting works because it's kind of unique and I haven't seen anything like it. So basically you take your VTX and this should fit most standard SMAs as far as I know. It works on all three that I have. You slide this on there so that it locks on to the square portion. Then you take the O-ring, which I was telling you about before, you stick this on top. Okay, so I've got the VTX plate on, I've got the O-ring on, and then the last thing I'm going to do is take the VTX plate. So I've got the anti-rotation plate, the O-ring, and then the VTX plate is going to sandwich it. I'm going to put it right on top. Then all i got to do is grab my antenna, grab a trusty wrench like this one, which comes with a lot of the VAS antennas, which is really nice. And I'm going to screw that on there, and that's going to lock everything down so that the antenna can't rotate, but also makes a secure connection with the SMA. And the key to this working is that O-ring sandwich in there, and the anti-rotation plate is just going to butt up against the top plate and keep the whole assembly from being able to rotate. It's going to clock the VTX so that it's always pointed up, that way when you press the button on the transmitter or if you change a dip switch it doesn't move on you. So once you've tightened the antenna down and you put some compression on the o-ring you're gonna have a really nice carbon VTX sandwich here. So that's pretty much the gist of that assembly. You're basically just gonna slot this into the back of the frame, slot your camera in, install your top plate and then you're done with the major assembly and this is gonna keep the VTX square to the top plate. Once you button this down, you'll see that the anti-rotation plate is the same shape as the VTX plate. So it's just going to butt up against the top plate and keep that from spinning. You can see, if you look closely, the SMA connector is captured in that square hole pretty well. And the antenna itself is not going to rotate into your props or just fall in there. It's going to have to actually be pushed into it. So that's the gist of the VTX sandwich assembly. And that's what makes this frame uh, unique from pretty much anything I've seen at the moment. I mean, the mounting is similar to what other people have done, but the method for which the VTX is secured is kind of unique. So thanks guys for watching my video on the version 2 SCX200. Um, I'm hoping to offer this frame soon. I'll probably offer it through Armitan Productions most likely as the primary source. And I might also do some small... Um, batch orders from time to time. It's just a matter of whether I have time to ship them out. But anyways, uh, here it is, the SEX 200 version 2. I'm going to build this one up next. You can see I've got a couple of them on hand. And uh, if you look closely at this one, you'll realize it's not actually an SEX 200. It's a little bit small, so it's an SEX 175. And this is going to actually be getting all the guts from my tweaker. And uh, it'll have four inch props. So we'll see how that does, and maybe I'll offer that in the future too. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye.